Tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. Uh, momentarily, is going to be August 6, 2021. So, happy August 6. Let's enjoy it while it lasts. Why would I say something like that? Listen, uh, truly, we're living in the last days. And the signs of the times are all around us. Stunning reports continue to come to the surface from all around the world. Events that are happening, events that are about to happen, events that have already happened that, that continue to prove that we're living in the last days. This is the time of the revelation, if you will. Uh, I say the book of Revelation, uh, and of course of Revelation being none other than Jesus Christ. Listen, I really want your attention for this particular broadcast tonight because we're going to be talking about something that is quite an anomaly, or an anomaly, excuse me. And uh, it is so grave. Uh, it, it, it's actually, I want to say, um, it, it borders a, a troubling report, but something that we need to know about. Uh, let me share with you some reports, some particular headlines, and then I'm going to go a bit deeper. Uh, I'm just grateful that Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. All right, listen, here is the first one. Atlantic Ocean currents are weakening. And apparently to scientists, they are saying that it is signaling big weather changes according to a very recent study. In another report coming in from, uh, let's see here, I think The Week, uh, scientists fear a critical Atlantic Ocean system might collapse, triggering extreme cold and sea level rise. Another report coming in from USA Today, says study warns of irreversible transition in ocean currents that could rapidly freeze parts of North America. You know, I, I find this stunning for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, this is all part of biblical prophecy. Jesus himself stated in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and then there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, the distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Um, I just saw uh, not too long ago a uh, report, uh, uh, and, and I actually happen to have a copy of the transcript. And it is the, the report that I saw was done, I believe, on the History Channel. And, uh, you know, they, they put out a lot of material, but this one was really. Uh, you know, right up uh, the alley of Bible prophecy, if you will, because it talked about ways that the world can end, one of which was that it can be wiped out by the ocean. Now, please understand that we know that uh, the world, you know, you know, God made a covenant with the world. He made a covenant with all things that have the breath of life. Uh, he, he, you know, he made a covenant with Noah, st you know, stating that he would never flood the earth again. Uh, so what we're talking about tonight, though, is the fact that we are truly living in the days of Noah and the erratic weather patterns that are happening on the world scene prove that the earth is going through what's called labor pains in the Bible. And it's groaning and it's moaning, it's laboring, it's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God uh, and it's crying out because we're living in the last days. And people don't understand that we are talking about uh, you know, a planet that was made by God himself, uh, the very one who gives us our breath is the same one who has placed his own breath in the animals, the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish in the sea, and a lot of the ecosystem is collapsing. A lot of the world's, uh, you know, food chain, if you will, is collapsing under the weight of sin. You know, under the weight of the judgment that is going to be coming upon the world because of the sin of, of mankind and the fact that we're living again in the last days. That the day of the Lord is at hand, and so. Uh, I'm going to share with you that particular transcript because I, I it, it really ties into today's report. But first, let me get into the article here from USA Today and why this is so not just important, but why it is uh, it, it would be the apocalypse on the planet. All right, so let me share with you the report. A large system of ocean currents in the Atlantic, which includes the Gulf Stream, 
has been disrupted due to human-caused climate change, according to scientists in a new report and study published just today, Thursday, or actually within the past 24 hours. If that system collapses, they say, would lead to dramatic changes in worldwide weather patterns. The Atlantic Meridional, I want to make sure, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, the Atlantic Meridional overturning circulation, or what is known as AMOC, transports warm, salty water from the tropics northward at the ocean surface and cold water southward at the ocean bottom. Well, according to a research uh, done in Germany by Nicholas Bowers from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact, he said that the Atlantic Meridiono overturning really is one of our planet's key circulation systems. Findings from a similar 2018 study drew comparison to the scientifically inaccurate 2004 disaster movie, The Day After Tomorrow, which used such an ocean current shutdown as a premise of the film. At the time, study authors said a collapse was at least decades away, but if it were to happen, or the fact that it was already posing itself, ready to happen, it would prove nothing but catastrophic. Now, they're saying a potential collapse of the ocean current system would have severe consequences around the globe, authors of the new study said. If this circulation shuts down, it could bring, it could bring extreme cold to Europe in parts of North America, raise sea levels along the U.S. East Coast and disrupt seasonal monsoons that provide water to much of the world, according to the Washington Post. It would also further endanger the Amazon rainforest and Antarctic ice sheets, according to The Guardian. Uh, researchers who study ancient climate change have also uncovered evidence that the, uh, th that the same collapse of the currents of the ocean can turn off abruptly causing wild temperature swings and other dramatic shifts in global weather systems. Um, I'm going to share with you a bit more in detail based on the transcript that I have a copy of concerning uh, how the world can literally be brought to an end uh, if the, 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 uh, you know, the currents of the ocean were to collapse. All right, so I'm going to read it verbatim. Please, your attention. And then we're going to get into some scripture because we're going to need it after this. The human race is under attack from the most devastating weather disaster to ever strike the modern world. The magnitude of something like this is a game changer for the entire planet. Blizzards, hurricanes, wildfires, massive floods, hellish destruction that can only be caused by one phenomenon. The shutdown of the world's ocean currents. Please understand that is the actual headlines I'm bringing to you tonight. This is what we're talking about. They're saying that according to a new study, the Atlantic Ocean's systems, the current right now is weakening so much so that they're expecting wild weather patterns. And so far, we're being told that this would be a devastating phenomenon. You screw, pardon my language, I'm reading it verbatim. You screw with an ocean weather system, the climate goes out of control. It is the end of the world as we know it. Will you be ready when doomsday strikes? Can any of us survive? Apparently, ocean currents control our climate by transferring heat and moisture from the water into our atmosphere, thereby influencing temperatures around the world. Uh, 12,000 years ago, as the last ice age was ending, the global ocean currents shut down, <coughs> excuse me, and much of the world slipped back into a deep freeze that lasted for over a thousand years. Now, if the ocean currents were to shut down today, which is what has been reported, friends. This is that's why this is fascinating. What would happen to our planet? Could we survive? This isn't some far-flung fictional thing. This is the beginning of a global climatic shift that is almost too much to survive. It'll be very slow, very painful, horrible death. It it's not a question of it if it will happen. It's almost certainty a question of when. Um, and so let, now they, they actually put out a scenario, a, a real life scenario that could happen based on this cataclysmic event. Uh, Boston's Fenway Park. Red Sox fans are enjoying the game when suddenly the oldest ballpark in the U.S. is hit with a deluge of water. This is beyond bad weather. Boston will be wiped off the map. The entire eastern seaboard is going to drown, and the destruction of, in Boston is the result of a catastrophic, scarier than anything mankind has ever faced, one that began decades earlier. In 2015, scientists discovered that something disastrous is happening to the system of ocean currents. That's actual. 
That's actual evidence, scientific study that came out in 2015, friends. Uh, again, that something disastrous is happening to the system of ocean currents known as the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt. The Global Ocean Conveyor Belt is the circulation system of the Earth's oceans. The main driver of the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt happens in the North Atlantic. Like a giant factory conveyor belt, warm water moves from the tropical equator to the northern Atlantic Ocean where it turns cold, salty, and dense. This denser water then sinks and flows south along the sea floor, enabling the warmer water con to continually flow above it from the tropics. The cold water travels through all the world's oceans until it mixes with warmer water and returns to the North Atlantic to repeat the cycle. So please understand that if this thing were to collapse, and again, according to scientists, they're fearing that a critical Atlantic Ocean system might collapse. They're expecting this thing to happen. Again, reports have come out within the past 24 to 48 hours. Uh, what happened over in the Atlantic would not just stay in the Atlantic. This will have global consequence. And then they liken it to the following. Like the blood vessels in your body that transport nutrients all throughout your system, large currents transport energy and heat all throughout the ocean. The ocean currents are vitally important because they distribute heat that affects the climate around the world. Light bulbs per person per year could be continuously lit by just that amount of heat transported by the ocean. But now, an international scientific expedition makes a startling discovery in the North Atlantic. Because of global warming, melting ice in Greenland has flooded the surface of the ocean with fresh water, diluting its saltiness so it doesn't sink anymore. Without the motion of the sinking water, the conveyor belt has stopped completely. Now this is, a, again, the scenario, very real life scenario that they're putting out there for us. The oceans drive weather systems. Again, you screw with an ocean weather system, the climate goes out of control, and then it kills you. And this unleashes a chain of disasters, a domino effect. Some will strike quickly, others will take years, even decades to unfold. You would think you're just flooding the North Atlantic with a little fresh water, no big deal, but a very delicate web that's been woven and breaking one strand could have catastrophic effect across the globe. At first, nobody notices the effects of the ocean current shutdown. Life goes on as normal. But then six months later, the disaster surfaces. People in Northern Europe are the first to suffer the wrath. They typically live in a mild climate year round thanks to the heart, excuse me, thanks to the heat released from the warm surface currents in the Atlantic, but without this hot air, a cold Arctic blast assaults the region. You'll have much colder wind dropping down from northern latitudes and the climate will begin shifting dramatically, especially in Europe. Without warm water continuously flowing into northern Europe, temperatures will begin to drop. The effects of the deep freeze quickly ripple around the world. A cargo ship from New York is headed for Hamburg, Germany, the second largest port in Europe, but the harbor is iced in. The head of the Port Authority orders icebreakers to free up the ships. This is the worst winter he and people across the Northern Hemisphere have ever experienced. Intense blizzards bring hurricane force winds and mountains of snow. The snowstorms will be dropping feet of snow an hour. I repeat, dropping feet of snow an hour if the currents of the ocean were to collapse which is what we're talking about tonight based on recent reports from scientists within the past 24 to 48 hours. Again, I'm sharing with you specific scientific scenarios that have been put out. The snowstorms will be dropping feet of snow an hour and the general temperatures being around 27 degrees Fahrenheit that will freeze very fast and very hard. A tourist heading for Paris is caught off guard by sudden whiteout conditions. Emergency services can't get through the snow to help him or dozens of other trapped victims. Now the cold becomes a killer. Hypothermia is terrifying. It's when your core temperature gets too low for your body to sustain itself and your muscles start to cramp. You start to get labored breathing. You will actually run a fever as your body is trying to keep your body alive. And then your core temperature will crash. Your body is shutting down because it's too cold and you will literally freeze to death. Northern Europe is doomed to remain in a deep freeze and the death toll will continue to rise. Meanwhile, the climate disaster spreads across the Atlantic to the United States, particularly in Massachusetts Bay. Freezing air rushing down from the North Atlantic stirs up a major storm front. A family of lobstermen is headed out to sea when they get the alert. 100 miles wide, 85 mile an hour winds, it's a nor'easter unlike anything the lobstermen have ever experienced. 
Normally they hit between autumn and early spring, but this nor'easter comes in the middle of summer. We would, have, we would be having increased frequency and intensity of nor'easters affecting us here in Boston, and those would be occurring with much greater strength. The superstorm sweeps through Boston, inundating the city with 15 feet of icy seawater. It swamps the subways, turns streets into rivers. Thousands escape the flooding by moving to higher ground, but some people in Boston are all but helpless as they're dragged to their deaths. It's a huge, terrifying catastrophe. You have the complete collapse of a society on both a local and global scale. From Boston to Northern Europe, as images of the catastrophe spread, people around the world brace themselves for the worse by fortifying shelters, stockpiling food and water, and other essential supplies. But will it be enough? Can anyone on Earth survive the deadliest disaster in human history, the collapse of the ocean's current? Global ocean currents, which regulate heat and rainfall around the world, have shut down, unleashing violent changes in the weather on both sides of the Atlantic. Frigid temperatures paralyze much of the northeastern United States. In Boston, freak storms flood the city, leaving tens of thousands homeless and many more dead. Meanwhile, in Europe, the area first affected by the ocean current shut down death by hypothermia is becoming a daily event. As a crisis deepens, what will happen to humanity? Can we survive? A year, into this catat a year into this catastrophic new weather pattern, the people of New York City now face the wrath. Off the coast, a massive cyclone, twice the size and strength of 2012's Hurricane Sandy, roars inland. Monster winds and waves slam into the Statue of Liberty and then barrel towards shore. A storm twice as powerful as Sandy is not even conceivable. This is destruction on a massive scale. 30-foot waves and 100-mile-per-hour winds explode through windows and doors, tearing buildings apart at the seams and dragging people deeper underwater. You'll have rain, wind, chaos, panic, and disorder all assaulting the city at once. It would be panic in the streets. Some people will be able to survive, but unless you have the resources and you have the wherewithal, you won't. The best thing to do would be to get out. And while the, northern, while the northeastern U.S. is battered by superstorms, the apocalyptic effects of this disaster starts traveling south. The next target, Brazil. Locals are enjoying the beaches of Copacabana and Ipanema when suddenly the weather turns violent. Monsoons and 75 mile per hour winds rage ashore. As a storm surges through the city of Rio de Janeiro, it becomes a death trap for locals and tourists who are violently pulled under the swift moving water. And as people flee for higher ground, they face another killer. Stormwater rapidly collects on the steep slope of the Serrano Mountains. The water-soaked ground loosens, creating an 80-foot swell of mud, rocks, and water. The landslide flattens the Shanti slums that cling to the mountainside, but thousands of people are buried alive. As the climate catastrophe ripples around the world, it finally reaches the Pacific Ocean, where the shallow coastal water is now unusually hot. Due to the shutdown of the ocean currents, now, whenever we have warmer water, we tend to have stronger hurricanes or typhoons that form there because they really get their energy from the warm surface water. And if that is warming up, there's going to be more energy to power those big storms. So now it goes to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, where a group of American tourists run for their lives as a Category 5 hurricane slams ashore with 60-foot waves and 165-mile-per-hour winds. The vacationers are desperate, crying for help, and they're barely heard over the turbulent stormwater that pulls them out to sea. Puerto Vallarta will be ripped apart by a constant barrage of super cyclones. Folks, these are massive storms that will just walk right over the peninsula and wipe out cities. They will be completely gone. It's not just a cyclone hit we can rebuild. It's, oh, a cyclone hit, and here comes another one, and there's one after that. Puerto Vallarta is merely the latest victim as towns, villages, and cities from Central to South America get buried underwater. As the effects of the ocean current shutdown spread around the world, no place is immune from this disaster, which has already killed over tens of thousands of people. But these catastrophes are just the beginning. There's a new threat to our survival emerging at the bottom of the world. The ocean conveyor belt of currents that help regulate temperatures around the globe has now come to a grinding halt with consequences that are threatening our very existence. A decade now into that disaster, the shutdown of the ocean currents has set off a series of extreme weather disasters across the world from superstorms, severe droughts, massive hurricanes and blizzards. 
Nearly half a billion people have already died as a death toll climbs. Temperatures continue to plunge in the cold regions of North America and Northern Europe. With warm ocean currents no longer flowing up to the North Atlantic, the surface water remains cold, creating very frigid temperatures across Northern Europe with winters that last for 10 months. Snow falls relentlessly in Germany. The head of the country's busiest seaport once used giant icebreakers to get ships into port, but it's no longer possible to keep up with the deep freeze. And the vital transportation hub shuts down. Delivery of food and other resources grind to a halt. People suffering from cold weather afflictions like pneumonia and frostbite begin to overrun hospitals. Frostbite is a physical freezing of your tissue to the point where it can no longer sustain itself and then it rots. And then it gets to a point where the skin begins to turn black and the only thing you can do to save it from spreading is to cut your fingers off. Or you can wait and they'll fall off themselves. While Hamburg and other cities in Northern Europe freeze, in the Southern United States is a completely different scene. A deadly heat wave. Over time, the stalled ocean currents have warmed the atmosphere and driven away the rain belt, creating a severe drought. Smoke now fills the skies above the Texas panhandle as the surrounding dried up cornfields become a vast tinderbox for wildfires. You have the decrease in atmospheric moisture, creating much drier conditions at the surface, and you can have large scale fires that introduce a lot of soot and a lot of material into the atmosphere that can be very hazardous to the human health. By this time, people are trying to evacuate to safer areas, but thousands of people become trapped as flames and smoke engulf homes. This isn't something a large military-grade fire department would even be able to handle. Communities will be cut off and surrounded by flames. This isn't easily escapable. You've got fire raging across states, across state borders. You have tornadoes of fire forming. This is bad. In 10 years, nearly one-tenth of the world's population has perished and their survivors cling to life as the planet continues to be rocked by widespread catastrophes. And now the research scientists who first confirmed the shutdown of the ocean currents in the North Atlantic have a new cause for alarm. They take their research vessel to the South Pole. The bottom of the planet is now heating up. When the conveyor belt shuts down, the heat has to go somewhere that was going to the North Atlantic. Now it's going to the South. An enormous set of glaciers is now rapidly melting. They're part of the West Antarctic ice sheet, a mass of ice two miles thick and as big as the entire state of Texas. When the warm water comes underneath these glaciers and starts to melt at these pinning points is going to raise global concerns. Despite nearly 8,000 miles away, Miami is among the first cities to feel the impact of the rising seas. Most of the metropolitan area is only six feet above sea level and on the streets, people are now forced to walk knee deep and polluted salt water and then return to their homes that have been flooded. And then you go to New Orleans and New York and Boston that are all in equally dire straits. With so many places becoming uninhabitable, is there anywhere left on earth to escape this disaster? Ocean currents control the climate friends around the world by regulating heat and rainfall. If they ever stop moving, which is what we're talking about tonight, this is why this report is so important. We're talking about scientists stating that study has now warned that irreversible transition in ocean currents that could rapidly freeze parts of North America has been unleashed, if you will. It's, I mean, they're, they're, they're spilling the beans. Again, scientists fear a critical Atlantic ocean system might collapse, triggering extreme cold and sea level rise. This all came out within the past 24 hours. Atlantic Ocean currents weaken. Signaling big weather changes study. <laughs> That's an understatement friends with all that I'm sharing with you again uh, uh, It says, you know, if, uh, you know, you have uh, if 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 the ocean currents that control the climate around the world by regulating heat and rainfall if they ever stop moving Which is what we're talking about tonight the reports have just been shared with us Scientists predict decades of cataclysmic weather events that will threaten our very existence. And then they ask the question, could you survive? Now I got scripture for this, but I'm telling you friends, this is all biblical, prophetic, literally Bible prophecy. I started off tonight's broadcast sharing with you the gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 25. The seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear for the things that will be coming upon the earth for the power of the heavens will be shaken. It's not a matter of if it will happen, but a matter of when. They're talking about it now. To me, that's concerning. 
So now my question is, uh, as, as concerning as these reports are, what's even more concerning is, is if your name has not been written in, in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're not born again, if you have not submitted and surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. So we have to understand people die every day. And, and I, I don't want to sound like, oh, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a very big deal. It, 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 it's, a, it's eternal. <laughs> this is very significant in the eyes of the Lord. Where, where will you spend eternity? Are you in right standing with God? So don't let all this make you feel like, oh no, something uh, big is going to happen. It is. Uh, we, we're to be watching. We're to be waiting. We're to be, uh, you know, preparing ourselves, getting our houses in order. And this, to me, is uh, is 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 uh, 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 you know stunning. Again, the stunning, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a stunning report concerning uh, the current, uh, you know, the North Atlantic current ocean system that conveyor belt that they're saying that it's in a transition that it could stop in light of all that I'm sharing with you as fascinating as biblical as prophetic as that is as frightening as it is what is even more fearful is if you don't have Christ if you're if you're not in right standing with God if your sins have not been forgiven if if you if you were to die tonight before all this was to happen we even make it to heaven. You can. Listen, you can. God made a way for you to be forgiven of your sins. He made a way not just for you to be forgiven and continue on in your path of destruction, but for you to be given, excuse me, but for you to be forgiven and then to be made what's called a new creation in Jesus Christ. For you to become what's called born again by the Holy Spirit. And this is only made possible by what Jesus did for you over 2,000 years ago at the cross. You need to cry out to God. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Because truly, with all that I'm sharing with you, friends, the day of the Lord is at hand. And it's not God's will that any man perish. It's not God's will that you die in your sin. You know, it's, 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 it's not, it's, you know, it's, you, know it, you may not want to die in any, of, in any circumstance, but just knowing that, you're going to be with the Lord, knowing that you're going to make it to heaven. It, 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 I mean, there, it, it, it's, it, it makes a difference, friends. It really does. People die every day in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of judgment. Fear of damnation. Just fear. You don't need to go there. You can be in peace knowing that the one who saves you while you're alive will meet you at that point in time. At your death, if you will. Do you understand? But you need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. This isn't just uh, clearly. It's not a fear. You know, it's not a feel good message here. I'm not sharing that. Oh well, don't worry about it. Uh, there, there's a there's a fluffy guy in the sky with a big beard and white hair that's gonna meet you and he'll greet you, and all you know you know nothing else matters. No, everything matters to him. You matter to him. You need to surrender your life to Jesus so that he can meet you at that point of time and welcome you with open arms. And you won't be afraid. Even with all that's happening in the times that we're living in, we're living in the last days, you won't be afraid. If you heard that, it's on my end. I apologize. Let me, let me share with you a bit more here with this uh, narrated report, if you will, uh, concerning very specific uh, actual reports that came out uh, concerning the ocean's currents. Yikes. Okay, so now uh, let's, uh, we, 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 we're here, it says here that uh, now we're talking 15 years after the shutdown of the global ocean currents, nearly half a billion people are dead, survivors everywhere is, to even look for them is a constant battle against storms, starvation, and disease. There seems to be no end in sight. This is a change that is not going to stop. After weeks or months or years, this is something that is decades to centuries worth of changes. This is a gl global climatic shift that is, almost, that is almost too much to survive. In the American Southwest, a severe drought has ravaged the area. Now, before I go any further, I'm really wondering, because, you know, I've talked about uh, pole shifts on our broadcasts and how they relate to the days of Noah and how we could be very well literally in the midst of a global pole shift, a climatic shift where north becomes south and south becomes north. And when that is completed, it will be catastrophic. And 
is this the reason why the birds are dying? They're slamming themselves into buildings. They've lost their sonar in, in the oceans. You have all these red tides and causing mass animal deaths across the oceans of the globe. You have the beast of the field, uh, you know, just wasting away. And I, I and, and, and now again, the Atlantic Ocean current, you know, weakening, it's irreversible. It's like, these are major signs, friends, that something is happening to the planet that the Bible calls labor pains because again, the day of the Lord is at hand. A day, you know, the day of the Lord, not a day, excuse me, the day of the Lord is at hand. And it really, uh, to me, it's, it's, I'm stunned. I'm grateful that God made a way for us to be in him, saved and, and, and ready for, 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 to, you know, to meet our creator. Let's continue. Uh, in the American Southwest, a severe drought has ravaged the area. Fire departments can no longer contain the wildfires that continue to burn through cities and states. Another victim is the Colorado River. It once was the lifeblood of the region, supplying hydroelectric power and providing water for millions of people, but now it's running dry. If there's no snowpack and no rainfall, the Colorado River starts to dry up. The Colorado River also has a hydroelectric dam. The human condition is dependent on things like electricity and water. You take one of those away and things fall apart. Without water, crops and cattle have long since died off and people are struggling to hang on. With a lower percentage of the Earth's land area receiving ample amounts of rain, you have starvation on the very short horizon. The United States is not the only country reeling from the effects of the endless drought. On the other side of the world, with, without the annual monsoon rains, India and its groundwater reserves drain down to zero. A human will die after three days without water, so its resource is worth fighting for. The significant changes in climate are going to inevitably lead to wars and battles as people are struggling to possess more precious resources. When food is scarce, societies tend to come apart. People can't get food and they rebel quite often. The shutdown of, of the global ocean conveyor belt has stopped the ocean currents from flowing, causing an extreme cooling of the North Atlantic and a warming effect in the world's Southern Ocean, setting in motion a cascade of disasters across the world. Is there any safe place left on Earth? Across the globe, hundreds of millions of people flee their homes in search of food, water, and a livable climate. It's a mass migration of climate refugees that's unparalleled in history. We're talking entire nations or entire continents that might be forced to migrate from one location to another. And Jesus said that unless those days were shortened, no man, he said no flesh will be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. How do we handle such a significant change and where people live? How do we feed them? How do we shelter them? The crisis cuts across boundaries of class and wealth. A man who once ran one of the largest ports in Europe dies as a ragged refugee thousands of miles from his home. As a death toll mounts worldwide, another disaster is brewing in the South Pole. A buildup of heat in the Southern Ocean has now been eating away at the glaciers that are part of the West Antarctic ice sheet. As they rapidly melt, sea levels rise and now every coastal city in the world is under threat. Year after year after year, the water is getting closer to my front door until finally the water is inside your home. In the U.S., a storm surge is approaching Miami. It's high tide and a full moon. Exactly the same conditions as when Superstorm Sandy struck the eastern seaboard in 2012. But now even regular tides are over four feet higher because of the rise in sea levels. It's the worst night in Miami's history. On the streets, people are overtaken by the churning seawater. Some find temporary refuge, but with the entire city in crisis, emergency crews can't reach them all. Many who escape drowning will die of hunger and lack, and lack of drinking water. Others will never be found. Any kind of coastal city will have a massive problem if there is sea level rise. If you don't have the infrastructure in place to begin combating that, it will just keep coming. Smart people would move out of those cities. You have to adapt or die. From Miami to Rio and London, as sea levels continue to rise across the world, humanity will be put to the ultimate test. The next wave of destruction could mark the end of modern civilization. It's a year 20, well now it goes into a whole new year, but again, they, they're, they're kind of giving us an, a very specific and very real idea here. 
Global ocean currents, which help regulate temperatures around the world, have long since shut down, unleashing over eight decades of violent cataclysmic weather events that have changed the course of history. Is there any chance of survival for the future generations? Can we adapt, or is it mankind's or is mankind's fate sealed? We're going we're gonna to get into scripture here in a moment. In almost every corner of the world, humanity is barely hanging on through the worst climate crisis since the dawn of civilization. Famine and natural disasters have killed nearly 2 billion people. Mass migrations are igniting civil wars. It is the end of the world as we know it. And the global catastrophe continues to unfold in West Antarctica, where massive glaciers are rapidly melting into the ocean. Sea levels are now over 7 feet higher than normal, and they continue to rise. Every coastal city on the planet will be experiencing sea level rises of this magnitude. The coastlines of the world have to be rewritten and redrawn. Amsterdam would be gone. Venice would be gone. These cities would not exist anymore. Miami, Florida, which has already been beaten and battered by titanic superstorms, now vanishes into the Atlantic Ocean, along with most of the southeastern part of the state. The entire northeastern seaboard of the U.S. is forever changed. This frightening view of the future, with our ocean currents coming to a complete standstill, is based on science from the present. Scientists have been warning that the global ocean conveyor belt may be slowing down. For well over a century, the Earth has been steadily warming. Experts claim that in 2016, it was the hottest year on record for the entire planet. But at the same time, there were also record cold temperatures in the North Atlantic. This suggests that as the global warming continues to melt Arctic ice into the sea, this fresh water is making the cold surface currents less salty and dense so that they can't sink. Without this natural process, the world's ocean currents could eventually shut down. We're seeing that right now. That is literally going on right now. Look at the Greenland ice sheet. It's not only melting more, but it's melting faster. So this is a concern because that then would provide the large amounts of fresh water to the North Atlantic Ocean to cause a shutdown. To halt or slow down the global ocean conveyor belt, the magnitude of something like this occurring is a game changer for the entire planet. It's so much energy, so much of a massive change. Humans will literally have to adapt or survive. They will not be able to change to make things back to where they were. This isn't some far-flung fictional thing. A climate catastrophe is what we're facing right now. And unless we do something soon to prolong our way of life, we have to begin to evolve or die, is what they say. With sea level rise, it's not a question of if it will happen, it's almost a certainty, uh, 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 it's almost certainly a question of when. And that is that report. Quite stunning. I knew it would be. Listen, before I end the broadcast, I got to share with you what the Bible has to say. The hope of the Lord in the midst of all this. You must be born again, right? You must be saved. Exodus Chapter 15, verse 8 says, The waters heaped up at the blast of your nostrils, O Lord. The currents stood firm like a dam. The watery depths congealed in the heart of the sea. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 5, The waves of death engulfed me. The currents of chaos overwhelmed me. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 16, The currents of the sea were revealed and the foundations of the world were exposed at the rebuke of the Lord and at the blazing breath from his nostrils. This is exactly, this portion of scripture, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 16, is a perfect verse for everything I just shared with you outside of the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 25. So you have a portion of, you have, you have a verse from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 16, and a verse of the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 25, Spelling this out. But again, let me look at this one again. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 16. The currents of the sea were revealed and the foundations of the world were exposed at the rebuke of the Lord and at the blazing breath from his nostrils. God is letting us know something. He is God. There is no other. Psalm chapter 8, verse 8. The birds of the sky and the fish of the sea that pass through the currents of the seas. Psalm chapter 18, verse 4, The waves of death engulfed me, the currents of chaos overwhelmed me. That's the same portion found in 2 Samuel that we just read in chapter 22, verse 5. Psalm chapter 24, verse 2, For he, 
set its foundation upon the seas and established it upon the ocean currents. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 27, who says to the deep sea, be dry, I will dry up your sea currents. And the gospel of John chapter 2 verse 3, and you threw me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the sea currents surrounded me. Oh, I, I said John, it's not the gospel of John, forgive me, it's Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, Jonah chapter 2 verse 3. You threw me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the sea currents surrounded me. All your breakers and your surging waves passed over me. Amazing. Amazing. Truly, we're living in phenomenal times. <sighs> phenomenal times. Men's hearts failing them from fear. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will truly be shaken. Well, what manner of person ought we to be? Well, it says here in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 34, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to have strength to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Friends, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God. World news headlines clearly matching up with biblical prophecy. Take a moment, learn more about me and my ministry. I invite you to visit me on my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. While you're there, if you've been blessed by the work of this end time ministry, your support is needed. Your donations make a huge difference and bring the word of the Lord concerning the times that we're living in so that people can get ready. They can, for the first time, many of them, allow the Spirit of God to come in and change them, make them born again, and prepare them for the day of the Lord. Your support helps make it all possible. Take a moment, donate, become a monthly supporter. Again, at www.openyoureyespeople.com. The link, my website link will be um, associated with this report, with this broadcast on, on, on my social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, and on my website, obviously. So you could just click on the link, okay? Um, if you wanna mail me, that would be really cool. PO Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. Until the next report. May you all be richly blessed. Stay hidden in Christ. God bless you. We're living in the last days. Bye-bye.